a very good morning class 7 so yesterday we have i have told you i have given you some homework so that was on page number 125 and i told you to send it to me right so i haven't got any yet so mind this thing i will stop uh, sending work to you if you are not listening to me i am very strict with the children those who are not uh, listening to the teacher so i would not like this thing that you are just paying no heed what i am saying send it to me immediately as soon as you see this video so we have completed this and now we have come to the last section of this unit 6 that is the section 4 and it is a poem beautiful poem daffodils it's a beautiful poem daffodils and this poem is written by william wordsworth he is a very famous poet and he writes poems on nature mostly on the nature so as today is 20th uh, 16th january 2021 so we are going to start with the daffodils William Wordsworth He is a nature poet nature poet hain and this poem is this poem just tells about a beautiful scene of flowers which the poet goes through he was wondering i wandered lonely as a cloud first of all we will root uh, read the poem i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on a high over vales and hills when all at once i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle in the milky way along the margin of a bay 10000 saw i at once tossing their heads in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee a poet could not buy a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company i gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought for oft when on my couch i lie in vacant or in pensive mood they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of the solitude and then my heart with pleasure fills and dance with the daffodils so as uh, i have read the poem you might have understood that this poem is about the sight of um lot of flowers a field of flowers he is going through uh, he is wandering there and this poem is written when he was with his sister he was living with his sister so he wrote this poem he went uh, he wrote this poem when he was uh, living with his sister right so now i'm going to explain the summary of this poem so be very careful so now listen to me carefully so this uh, william wordsworth he is a poet poet of nature and he is a great lover of nature william wordsworth and had once wandered aimlessly just like a cloud floats in the sky so he was wandering aimlessly aimlessly means jaise aap waise aap kahin ghoom rahe hain you are you are just walking along strolling means wandering waise ghoom raha tha wo like a cloud means lonely as a cloud lonely as a cloud means yahan pe unhone simile use ki hai main aapko uh, turn by turn bataungi कि यहाँ पे क्या सिम वॉट आर वॉट इज अम्बली एंड एंड ऑल दैट यू माइट नॉट बी नोइंग दिस अबाउट दैट सो दीज आर द लिटरी डिवाइसेज वी कैन से द फिगर्स ऑफ स्पीच ऑल्सो दैट यू विल कम टू नो इन द सीनियर क्लासेस सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लिसन टू द समरी केयरफुली 
so he was wandering lonely as a cloud there and uh, he was just enjoying the scenery aimlessly just like a cloud floats in the sky he had suddenly come across this countless golden daffodils so jaise he was wandering here and there aimlessly jaise ki cloud sky mein ghumta hai aimlessly he has compared himself to a cloud so suddenly he came across a scene samne unke ek scene aa jata hai countless golden daffodils काउंटलेस मीन्स इतनी बड़ी फील थी जिसमें फ्लावर्स ही फ्लावर्स लग रहे थे कौन से फ्लावर्स थे डेफोडिल्स तो सामने उनके बहुत बड़ी फील्ड आ जाती है जिसमें काउंटलेस थाउजेंड एंड थाउजेंड ऑफ डेफोडिल्स बाय द साइड ऑफ अ लेक यू वॉज वंडरिंग अलॉन्ग द लेक सो सडनली ही केम अक्रॉस अ सीन वेयर ही कुड सॉ अ काउंटलेस येल्लो गोल्डन कलर डेफोडिल्स so these golden daffodils were fluttering and dancing in the air so cool breeze was blowing thandi thandi hawa chal rahi thi aur breeze ke sath jo phool the wo bhi aise aise they were fluttering like in the air so the this made as if they were dancing in the frenzy so uh, the wind was blowing and the flowers was also waving like this they were fluttering in the air so it was uh, he was feeling as if the flowers are also dancing in frenzy means they were dancing they were so happy and the sight of flowers made him so happy from inside that uh, now in the further poem he compares each and every beautiful scene with that sight of flowers but he says that the sight of flowers was unparalleled nobody can no scene can parallel to its beauty continuous as the stars that shine the poet uh, compares the golden daffodils with the stars that shine phir wo uh, daffodils ko stars ke se simile karte hain similarize karte hain ki jaise stars shine karte hain sky mein aise hi yahan pe in twinkle in the milky way milky way hum kisko kehte hain upar sky jo hamara solar system hai that is called as the milky way you might uh, have heard this term in the science also so hamara jo hum jise kehte hain universe and the sky the all that area that covers the solar system planets and all that that is called the milky way so he says just as the stars shine in the milky way similarly along the margin of a bay 10000 saw i at glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance so he says as the stars shine twinkle in the sky the poet feels the number of daffodils as never ending as the stars in that milky way so he says that jaise ki countless stars hote hain jo milky way mein shine karte hain unki koi bhi ginti nahi kar sakte means they are countless similarly i came across the sight of countless flowers that is the daffodils that also along the lake and the scene was so mesmerizing that he felt uh, bewitched that scene wo ekdam us scene se amused ho gaye and uh, william wordsworth and he says that ki jo wo sight thi flowers ki wo unmatched thi na to wo jaise flowers twinkle karte hain sky mein aur countless hote hain aise hi wo flowers the to means they are the beauty of that flowers that sight was unparalleled then he says then he moves ahead the waves beside them danced because he was moving along the lake to waves jo the wo bhi aise aise saath mein chal rahe the so it seems as if the waves are also dancing with the flowers but they outdid the sparkling waves in the glee then first of all he compared the stars with the compared the flowers with the stars and now he compares these waves he says that waves of the lakes are also dancing but the dance of flowers the dance of waves in happiness happiness the poet is wonderfully delighted in such a pleasant company so according to him he says that the dancing of that waves was not that beautiful that the, as if the, the flowers were dancing in that frenzy so he felt more delighted to see the flowers dancing with the waves with the breeze of the wind so he feels that it was unparalleled as if the flowers were dancing no doubt the waves were also dancing but they were not that beautiful they were not looking that beautiful they were not giving that happiness to the poet that the sight of 
dancing and fluttering flowers was given to the uh, William Wordsworth. So poet was elated. He was overjoyed. So he says that waves of the lake are also dancing, but the dance of the daffodils surpass the dance of waves. Means unko koi bhi, poet ko koi bhi jo sight hai, flowers ke dance se upar achhi nahi lagdi. He says that it, no other scene is surpassing the dancing of daffodils. First of all, he compared the flowers with the twinkling stars in the Milky Way. Second, now he is comparing the waves. The dance of waves. Waves bhi kabhi seedhi nahi rehti hai. Waves bhi aise aise leherati rehti hai. But he says that the waves were also looking beautiful but they could not surpass the dancing flowers. That is the daffodils. So the poet is wondering delightfully wonderfully delighted in such a pleasant company. According to the poet he could scarcely realize that he was collectively a treasure in his mind. So he was enjoying the company of that flowers, that dancing flowers to such an extent that he was feeling as if he is in some other world. Unsko aisa lagda tha ki wo shayad kisi aur world mein pohunch gaya because the sight of that dancing flowers, fluttering flowers was giving him such joy. So according to the poet, he could scarcely realize that he was collecting a treasure in his mind. To wo jo sight thi flowers ki fluttering, wo unke mind mein ek picture ki tarah click ho gai. Now, next. A poet could not be gay. In such a joke in company, I gazed and gazed but little thought that the wealth of wealth the show to me had brought. Means jo mujhe flowers ko dekh ke jo khushi mili hai, unka jo sight tha, unka jo vision tha, wo mere mind mein click ho chuka as a picture. For oft on my couch I lie, in the vacant or impensive mood, they flash upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of the solitude. So, and then my heart with pleasure fills and dance with the daffodils. Now he says that after watching that, after enjoying that scene for some time, he enjoyed, he stayed there for some time and he enjoyed and saw the beauty, unmatched beauty of the dancing flowers. Then he came back to his home and the last paragraph, in the last paragraph he says that, in the last stanza, he continues, he says that, Time went on. Uske baad, I started doing my another work. I got busy in my work and once I was sitting on my couch means uh, the time went on that the poet found himself the vacant or pensive mood. He says that I got busy in work and whenever I feel, whenever my mind is free or if I am in a pensive mood, if I am in a very serious mood, so that beautiful picture of the fluttering flowers, the dancing flowers that came back to my mind. Beautiful sight of that golden daffodils. It began appearing in his mind and that recollection filled the poet's heart with extraordinary delight. So he wants to say in the last stanza, he is saying that once I saw the sight, once I saw these flowers, these flowers were looking beautiful and no sight, no natural sight was going to surpass such a beautiful sight of the fluttering flowers in the wind. No star, stars as if the stars twinkle in the sky, countless stars twinkle in the sky. Similarly, uh, there were countless daffodils, they were fluttering, they were waving in the, with the wind. So he says that, but nobody could match the beauty of the dancing daffodils then he come to then he compares the flowers with the waves also that waves were also moving to and fro but still he says that no sight can no picture no image can give me that much delight that these flowers have given me so he was just mesmerized with this image of dancing daffodils. So in the nutshell, what we can say nutshell means means aapko mein iska summarize karke bata rahi hun. Ye to mene aapko detailed summary batai. Paragraph wise, stanza wise aap mene aapko samjha diya. 
बट इन अट शेल मीन्स पूरी पोएम का जो निचोड़ है उसे हम कहते हैं इन अट शेल ठीक है इन द नट शेल द पोएम एग्जाम्पलीफाइज हाउ द विलियम वर्ड्स वर्क अ पैंथियस्ट डिराइज एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी ब्लिस फ्रॉम दी साइट ऑफ दीज डांसिंग फ्लावर्स so in the nutshell he says that uh, he wants to focus on the uh, point that once i saw this sight of dancing daffodils once i was on wandering aimlessly like a cloud once i saw that image of that picture of uh, flowers fluttering in the wind and no other scene could surpass the beauty of those daffodils and this thing has uh, means uh, this thing happened somewhere in the past us cheez ko bahut time ho chuka the time went on and whenever he feels uh, like he is uh, whenever he feels sad or whenever he is free for some time and he is lying on his couch and as if he closes his eyes so he could feel that picture of that dancing daffodils coming back to his mind because at during that uh, when he saw that uh, when he just came across the sight of the flowers and they were dancing and they were just fluttering with the wind so that scene had been permanently clicked in his mind and now after so much time has been passed even now whenever he is in a pensive mood or in a sad mood and he is sitting on his couch or on his bed so if he feels sad so uh, automatically that scene of dancing daffodils come to his mind and he it's extracts or usse usko extracts the uh, unmatched happiness from that picture so he says ki mera jo heart hai fir fir se bahut khushi se bhar jata hai jab mujhe wo image daffodils ki yaad aati hai aaj bhi means is baat ko bahut zyada time ho chuka hai but still whenever i get time and i think so that image comes back to my mind lively as i saw it once and that image of flowers that like vision of flowers just fills my heart with utmost happiness so this was the poem isn't it very beautiful what do you think isn't it beautiful so this is a very beautiful poem we can say that uh, like it is an unmatched poem because the poet enjoys the company of that dancing daffodils so like here i wandered lonely as a cloud means here he is wandering the lonely akele ghum raha tha wahan pe hills mein aur valleys mein valleys means valley and he felt all lonely and moppy suddenly he passed a uh, lake and he noticed a big group of yellow daffodils waving in a breeze so i'm just again recapitulating it for you and then this wasn't just some scattered patch ye koi chhota sa scattered patch nahi tha there was just countless thousands and thousands around the particular bay particular bay jaise bay of bengal hota hai na means an area where the earth takes a like um, there is no match means um, a bay is like a, a part of the coast where the land goes in a form of a curve wahan pe jo land hai thodi se curve mein aa jati jaise hum bay of bengal bengal ki khadi bolte hain na jaise to aise hi unhone dekha ki lake ke paas ek jagah pe jahan pe bay ban raha tha curve ban raha tha wahan pe a big patch jahan pe thousand thousands of daffodils jo hain dance kar rahe the Yes, the daffodils dance, and so did the waves of the lake. But the daffodils dance was better. Definitely, it was better than that the dance of the waves, as well as the shining stars that shine in the Milky Way. But the uh, speaker's loneliness was replaced by the joy. That time he was feeling very lonely, but his loneliness was replaced by the joy to see that sight of the dancing daffodils. He did not even realize that what a gift he has received until later. Now, whenever he is feeling a kind of sad or in he is in a pensive mood so he just thinks of the daffodil and his heart is happily dancing again so he feels happy again right so this was a beautiful poem by william wordsworth and with this we have completed 
uh, with our syllabus and this was our last part so now we come to the this now we come to the uh, do you want any extra tossing their heads any i don't think that there is some extra word meanings in this poem so if you feel if you have some difficulty uh, in understanding so we will discuss definitely but i don't think whales here means valleys i will explain you all this which has been written here daffodils ek yellow flowers hote hain jaise ki yahan pe show kiye hue hain this shape and then fluttering means aise aise hilna to move rapidly and then comes the continuous as the stars means continuous jo lagatar chalta ja raha hai right ट्विंकल इन द मिल्की वे मैंने आपको समझा दिया है जो हमारा सोलर सिस्टम होता है ऊपर जो सारा हमारा यूनिवर्स है ब्रह्मांड है उसको मिल्की वे बोलते हैं अलॉन्ग द मार्जिन ऑफ द बे बे इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ कोच कोस्ट वेयर द लैंड गोज इन अ कर्व वहां पे उसको उसको बे बोलते हैं टेन थाउजेंड सौ आई एट ग्लांस ग्लांस मीन्स जैसे ही आपकी नजर पड़ी अ क्विक लुक आप एक मिनट की जो लुक देते हैं उसको हम ग्लांस बोलते हैं Tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Sprightly here means lively, brisk, tezi se, lively dance कर रहे हैं जो. Then outdid means outdid here means that they were much better. Right? Uh, gay. Gay is very happy. To be very very happy. Choice. जो आपको आनंद दे रहा है. <coughs> in such a jocund company, cheerful, lively. I gazed. Gazed होता है एक लंबी लुक आप जब देते हैं किसी को आप लगातार जब उस किसी चीज को देखते रहते हैं दैट इज कॉल गेस्ट अ लॉन्ग लुक स्टेयर भी कह सकते हैं उसको काउच होता है बच्चे एक छोटा सा कह लो आप सोफा टाइप्स ठीक है रेस्टिंग प्लेस या सोफा इतना बड़ा सा एक काउच होता है उस पर बैठ के आप लेट भी सकते हैं हाफ ले कर सकते हैं या आप थोड़ा सा रेस्ट कर सकते हैं इन वेकेंट और इन पेंसिल मोड वेकेंट होता है जब आपके पास कुछ नहीं है करने को खाली हैं आप और पेंसिल होता है थोड़ा सा सैड मोड मूड जब आप थोड़ा सा उदास फील कर रहे हैं ठीक है दे फ्लैश अपॉन दैट इनवर्ड आई इनवर्ड आई मीन्स आपकी इनवर्ड आई यहाँ पे कहने का मतलब कि आपकी सोल आपकी आत्मा आपकी माइंड में वो पिक्चर वापस आ जाती है विच इज द ब्लिस ऑफ सॉलिट्यूड ब्लिस होता है बहुत ज्यादा जब आपको अंदरूनी खुशी मिलती है उसको ब्लिस बोलते हैं इंटरनल जॉय सॉलिट्यूड होता है लोनलीनेस अकेलापन राइट सो एंड देन माई हार्ट विथ प्लेजर फिल्स फिल्स एंड डांस विद दिल्स सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू नाउ वी कम टू द क्वेश्चन आंसर पार्ट so in this poem uh, we have come across uh, there are figures of speech in the poems so when you will go in the senior classes like in uh, 9th or 10th so you will come across these type of things when you will read a poem or study a poem so you will have to uh, understand what figures of speech the poet is using in that poem so according to your level class level so i'm just telling you about the simile it is one of the figures of speech so here he is <clears throat> uh using the simile that is the figure of speech that is simile he has used simile simile means jab aap kisi cheez se compare karte hain kisi cheez ko jaise yahan pe bol raha na i wonder lonely as a cloud so now in this line i wonder lonely as a cloud now here the poet is comparing simile kar raha hai wo kis se cloud se apne aap ko similarize kar raha hai jaise ki ek cloud jo hai jo aimlessly wander karta rehta hai 
स्काई में ऐसे ही ही वॉज ऑल्सो एमलेसली वंडरिंग देयर नियर अलॉन्ग द लेक सो द फर्स्ट सिंपली इज आई वंडर लोनली एज अ क्लाउड लाइक ही इज कंपेयरिंग हिमसेल्फ टू अ क्लाउड लाइक अ क्लाउड एज इफ ही इज ऑल्सो एमलेसली एज द क्लाउड फ्लाइज इन द स्काई एमलेसली वंडर्स इन द स्काई एमलेसली सिमिलरली ही वॉज ऑल्सो एमलेसली वंडरिंग देयर सेकेंड सिंपली इज दैट फ्लटरिंग fluttering and dancing in the breeze so in this simile um, he is just comparing fluttering and dancing in the breeze in this line also he is comparing the waving of flowers to the dance fluttering and dancing in the breeze in the breeze So, like in this uh, simile, in this line, he is comparing the waving of the daffodils with the breeze. जैसे कि breeze चल रही है, cool wind is blowing. So he is comparing. He is doing the simile of the dance of the flowers, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Means they are also dancing with the breeze, as if the breeze is blowing. The flowers are also dancing with the waving. wind blowing wind so third simile is uh, it's a personification like this is the simile ye hamari simile thi theek hai aur ye hamara personification hai personification is like jab aap kisi non living thing ko personify karte hain means ek aap flowers hain ya breeze hain fluttering and dancing in the breeze Uh, now here he is comparing that uh, the flowers to a person like like the person dances he is comparing he is personifying the flowers with the uh dance fluttering and dancing in the breeze here he is personifying then the third is alliteration alliteration hota hai bachche jab aap kisi bhi ek word ka now comes the alliteration This is the personification. This is the alliteration. Now, alliteration कहाँ पे हुई है? We will find out. So these things are new to you. I am just giving you an idea because in the uh, senior classes you will have to analyze the criticize analyze the poem like this. You have to find out the simile. You have to find out the personification if uh, he has used or you have to see the metaphor. these all are there are so many parts of figures of speech so you will come to know when you will come in the senior classes so these are few just to give a quick recap to you simile when you are comparing something personification when some non living thing is personified theek hai alliteration hota hai bachche jaise is line mein hai continuous as stars continuous as the stars that shine continuous as the stars shine now look here stars shine yahan pe kya hota hai jo alliteration hoti hai na bachche wo hota hai ki jab hum ek hi alphabet ke se words hum start karte hain yahan pe two hi words hain but in certain poems what happens like stars also starts with s shine also starts with s so the in a line in a sentence there are some words which start with the same alphabet that is called the alliteration stars shine means with the same sound words in a sentence that is called alliteration i hope these three things are clear to you these are called as the figures of speech clear so now we come to the <clears throat> question answer part what is the poet compare himself to yes what is the poet compare himself to poet kis se compare karta hai apne aap ko poet is comparing himself to a cloud write down so the poet is comparing himself to a aimless cloud poet 
which is comparing himself with a cloud. Read out the first line so you will come to know with whom he is comparing himself. I wondered lonely as a cloud. Poet is comparing himself with a cloud. With a lonely cloud. Jaise ki clouds akele wonder karte rehte hain sky mein. That poet is also <coughs> wondering there. Where were the daffodils growing? Yes. Where he found that daffodils? Kahan par unko mila daffodils? Kahan bhi ki unko? Hmm. Beside the lake, beneath the trees. He found the daffodils. The poet found the daffodils. Where? Where? Beside the lake, beneath the trees. So he found that fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So Third answer is how does the poet compare the daffodils with the stars? <clears throat> how does the poet compare the daffodils with the stars? The poet compares the daffodils. The poet says as if the stars shine. The poet says, the poet says, as if the stars continuously shine. लाइक like, जैसे कि स्टार्स हमारे मिल्की वे में कंटिन्यूसली शाइन करते हैं शाइन इन दैट शाइन इन द मिल्की वे सिमिलरली डेफोडल्स आर व्हाट आर द डेफोडल्स डूइंग दे आर आल्सो fluttering they are also tossing their high uh, heads in the margin of a bay similarly daffodils are also dancing dancing and tossing their heads so are also tossing and flapping Daffodils are tossing their heads. Now, what is tossing their heads? Toss करना क्या होता है? Toss करते हैं, उछालते हैं। ऐसे ही जो flowers हैं, वो कभी अपना ऐसे head क्या होता है flowers का, जो main part है flower का, तो कभी ऐसे हो रहे थे, कभी ऐसे हो रहे थे। So that is called the tossing of heads. Heads in the the word, uh, the similarly the daffodils are also tossing their heads in the blowing wind so with the blowing wind wind ठीक है जैसे कि हमारे stars shine करते हैं मिल्की वे में similarly daffodils are tossing their heads with the blowing wind the next is What wealth does the poet talk of? कौन सी वेल्थ उसको मिल गई Here the poet is talk 
talking about the so here the poet is talking about the beautiful sight of the golden daffodils the sight which gives him gives uh, his mind or which fills his mind fills his mind with bliss poet's heart with extraordinary delight means with such a sight of this daffodils uh, means once he has saw this uh, saw this beautiful sight of this golden daffodils but this sight Whenever he feels pain, he is in a sad mood or in a pensive mood, whenever he thinks of that side, that fills his mind with bliss and poet's heart with the extraordinary delight. So this is the verse he is talking about. So this is the, this is uh, means, this is the, this is the wealth the poet is talking about. poet is talking about इसी के बारे में poet जो है बात कर ठीक है हमारा next question क्या है how does the poet feel in the vacant mood so whenever the poet is in the vacant mood so whenever the poet is in pensive mood or he is vacant so what he feels they flash on that inward eye he is vacant the beautiful sight of dancing daffodils the beautiful sight of the dancing daffodils they appear in his mind appears in his inward eye bhi likh sakte hain hum jaise inhone likha inward eye here means the spiritually yes so appears in his mind theek rahega and makes him happy so in the nutshell he wants to say He, in the nutshell, he wants to say that he exemplifies that how a pantheist derives extraordinary bliss. He wants to say that how a beautiful sight.
of flowers can change the pensive mood of a poet. So with this we have completed with the question answer 5.